Hello sewing people of the internet. In this video I'm going to be reviewing an $8 sewing machine that I bought on Timu. If you're new around here, I generally start my videos with some kind of context and this video is going to be no exception and maybe more so than others. So uh, I'll put chapter markers, but I want you to know where I'm coming from. I'm going to have a little bit of fun with this video because I think bad translations are hilarious. I'm not trying to be disrespectful. I do find it amusing though that, I mean, it wouldn't be that hard to get some of this stuff more accurate in, you know, this day and age. But I can also understand why a company selling an $8 sewing machine probably doesn't care if their English is correct. But it does make some kind of funny outcomes from time to time. But on a serious note, I do want to answer a question. Does this thing actually work? I have over 30 sewing machines, everything from Singer Featherweights all the way up to Walking Foot Industrial Machines. And I use them for a wide variety of tasks, typically leaning towards the heavier end of things. Wax canvas and heavy nylon fabrics and things like that. I can't imagine that I would actually get any use out of a machine like this. However, maybe you're a person who thinks the idea of learning to sew might be fun, but doesn't want to invest any money. Uh, or doesn't want to buy a used sewing machine that might not work correctly. You don't know anything about it. Maybe you have a child who's interested in learning to sew and you don't want to let them, you know, use your good machine. If this thing works, maybe it's a good way to get introduced into the hobby. Also, interestingly, this one can be powered by AA batteries and uh, used somewhere where you're off grid. I'm going to test that and see if it works. So. Mostly, I think this is probably going to be a complete pile of junk, and I'll be surprised if it works at all. But I could see that if it does work, maybe there's some application for it. Although I think the claims made in the advertising and uh, the website and stuff probably overreach a little bit. So let's take a look at what is claimed about this machine. We'll unbox the machine, see what we got, and I'll give it a try and see if I can get it to work. So my wife was shopping on Timu, to, much to my chagrin, and uh, she stumbled upon this machine and showed it to me, and we both got a laugh out of some of the descriptions, and that led to me buying it. So uh, let's just go over some of the, the product claims. Uh, it's an original upgrade. I have no idea what that means. Uh, you can use it for baby apparel, fabric crafts, pet supplies, and doll costumes. My wife pointed out that the face on the doll is blurred out. It's kind of interesting. So looking at the product analysis, some of the features this machine has are a loose and tight tuner, a take-up pole, a wire cutter, a small night light. It's funny, like, you know, obviously the wire cutter, they mean the thread and you're just using the wrong word. That's funny. The small night light, that's kind of hilarious because it's like, you know, you're just going to leave the machine turned on as a nightlight when you uh, need to get up and go to the bathroom. The website claims that the machine is multifunctional and suitable for daily home use. I doubt it. It's simple. With instructions, anyone can use it in 10 minutes. Maybe I should time myself. It's mini size, a small but powerful machine. Underneath the description, there's a paragraph that says sewing is creative. Not only is sewing therapeutic, it is also super creative, which makes it one of the best benefits of sewing in my eyes. Comment there might have been helpful. Think of all the different ways there are to sew a seam, finish a hem, insert a zipper. And then there are all the different types of fabric to work with, all the different patterns to hack up and create with. Getting creative with our construction techniques and fabric choices means we are engaging our brains in more creative thought. Great for the mind. Okay. So next under characteristics, uh, number one, household. Perfect size and price for a household sewing machine, which can achieve every personal patchwork task. Yeah, again, I doubt it. By the way, note the picture. Then uh, number two, straight line sewing for everyday sewing, stitch display. Number three, best gift choice. Great gift for senior fan of handicraft. Do I count as a senior in a Four, video tutorials. Free video tutorials and online customer service answers until you learn. That almost sounds threatening. And again, note that the video, the, the thumbnail of the video portrays the person showing from the wrong side of the machine. 
Uh, there's multiple color options. I chose Lake Changing, Changing, uh, which is also kind of funny that, you know, it's pink, purple, and then Lake Changing. You're like, I don't know why they only used a Chinese name. I, don't, I assume that's an actual lake in China. I have no idea uh, for that one color. But uh, product details, straight line sewing. I know they mean straight stitch, but it's funny that they say straight line sewing and show a curved line. It's kind of amusing. Uh, wire cutter function, again, they mean thread. Eat four layers thick. Okay. Uh, and apparently it has two speeds to choose from. In the factory delivery, I guess they, what they mean is what's delivered with the machine, uh, you've got a power supply, original needle. Using original sewing machine needles can effectively prevent jumper disconnected? I can't quite make that out, but okay. Uh, six metal lock cylinders. Uh, they're referring to bobbins, including two easy to make various colors on the machine. Okay. Uh, and this one might be my favorite the needle thread. It's a little portable needle threader. Uh, insert the needle threader into the needle hole, then thread the thread into the needle threader, pull out the needle threader, and wear it. So after reading that description on Timu's website, I was prompted to go ahead and order this thing. I mean, how could I not? So let's take a look in the box and see what we got. By the way, this came in a big plastic bag with some other stuff that my wife had ordered. So... I don't even know what kind of condition it's going to be in. I don't know if there's any padding inside this box, but there was nothing, no other padding around it. It didn't come in another box or anything, so hopefully it's intact. We have directions, which I will definitely read through and probably point out some funny stuff from later. Well, we got the color we ordered. That's good. So we have one, two, three, four bobbins, and there's probably two on the machine. Machine uses a bobbin for the top thread and the bobbin thread or the bottom thread with the option to use a regular size spool. So, so there's six total. The two are already on the machine. Practically convenience, big value. Oops. Nice power adapter. Foot pedal. Wow, that is. He's small. Well, it did say it would be pre-threaded, and uh, it is. It's got a little sample of fabric in it. This hand wheel is very difficult to grab. The way this design... I'm not trying to pick this machine apart. It was $8, but the way this is slanted, it doesn't give you a lot to grab onto. Well, it is forming a stitch. Interesting, the tension seemed to be good until I started sewing with it. I don't know what that might mean, but whatever. Elsewhere in the, either on the box or I forget where I saw it, it says that it does a two thread chain lock stitch. I, it's obviously a lock stitch machine. I don't know where, where they got chain from. It's not a chain stitch machine, but one other feature is this very clever spool pin that can retract. So that, that's actually kind of nice that it has that, honestly. Uh, and then we have the speed control, and this is the power switch. Before I plug it in, I'm going to look at the instructions. So I was looking over the instructions. It's worth eight bucks just for this, because it's pretty funny, but uh, before I tell you some of the other stuff in it, I want to point out one actual piece of information that's, you know, forget silly translation stuff. It shows the power socket on the top, pedal socket on the bottom, and on this machine at least, it's exactly the opposite. Fortunately, they are completely different from one another. You know, the pedal can't plug into the power and vice versa, but I could see that being a bit of a problem. But a couple of things that stood out to me looking at the directions. One, there is a symbol down here that does not seem to refer to anything else and says zero degrees Celsius above the environment. 
no idea what they're trying to say there. And the, the other thing, I've already mentioned this, I think, but a couple of places it says, uh, so here it says, insert the power or replace needles. So in other words, if you're going to plug in the power or replace a needle, please put the power in the closed position. I'm not trying to be silly here, but you, when you connect a circuit, you're closing the switch. When you open it, you're disconnecting it. If I'm wrong about this, somebody please mention it in the comments. So I could see that could be actually a little bit dangerous if somebody is misinterpreting it. Obviously what they mean is turn it off, but you know, if their bad translation is being read by someone who also maybe doesn't have the best mastery of English, that could be confusing. Uh, number four is particularly helpful. Please do not collapse or reform the native. Again, I have no idea what they're trying to get at there. The last two items on these instructions. Uh, number seven, after the machine plugging line or the bobbin sets of movement or for other reasons, that is machine was fixed or the hand wheel can't work after booting, shall be cut off power immediately to put everything smoothly before booting, otherwise it will damage the machine and power transformer. Right. Number eight, line fault can slove as conventional fault if cannot solve, please contact the dealers where you buy the machine. I gotta get a dictionary. Okay, so I think I know enough to turn it on and give it a try. Well, I've made the classic YouTuber mistake of uh, doing something when the camera wasn't turned on, but uh, I plugged it in and was gonna sit down to sew with it, so I turned it on and that happened. So, oh, okay, so that's interesting. All right, so with it turned off, it's on with the pedal. Uh, that explains one thing that I read. I have to figure out where I saw that. Yeah, so in the factory delivery section on their website, it says a dedicated foot pedal to control the machine switch, the same function as the power button. I thought that was just really bad translation, but they really mean it. So when the foot pedal is plugged in, having the machine, the power button off is correct. And then you use the pedal and I don't know if there's any actual speed control. No, it looks like it's just on off. All right, so that's fun. Uh, I was pleased to see that the pedal actually does reach the floor on a table of a reasonable height. So that's something. Wow, this is really awful thread. Needle is threaded from left to right. Oh, I should try the light. How do I turn the light off? Oh, look at that. Now I can see super well. Sorry, I'm blocking your view. I'm trying to thread the needle. You know what? This is hard. I'm going to try their needle threader. I never, ever, ever use the... I've got a bunch of these that have come with vintage machines. I've never used one, but let's give it a try. Huh. Look at that. So I've got one of my undershirts here that has... Uh, like a three thread cover stitch or something on the bottom that come loose and because it is a kind of a chain stitch it's Just continuing to get worse and worse. So let's see if this eight dollar machine can secure that This is not the same kind of stitch obviously I'm not worried about that but thing go. I'll be darned. Hmm. Oh, I 
man, you were doing so good. What happened? Didn't like something there, but I mean, you know, listen, for eight bucks. I'm pulling some of the old stitching that was coming loose out. This is the existing stuff, not from the new machine. Yeah, it looks like it kind of got knotted up a little bit. Maybe it stopped being able to feed it for some reason. It was slipping and it put a bunch of stitches in one spot. Does this have reverse? I don't think it has reverse. I don't remember reading that. that. Uh, there's also a low speed setting. I guess let's see if we can finish this. And we'll try it at a lower speed. That oh, broke the thread. I pulled it out one the other. All right. Needle threader to the rescue. Did I forget to put the foot down or something? I don't remember. Man, I might be a convert to the needle threader. All right, let's try it again. Come on, little machine. I'm counting on you to fix my shirt. Well, naturally, the uh, camera shut off, so you missed a couple things, but I finished repairing the shirt hem, and it's totally good enough for an undershirt. But uh, it did okay. It worked all right. I did notice that the difference between high and low is almost imperceptible. I'm going to see if I can demonstrate that for you, but first let me see if it can sew two layers, I think. Yeah, two layers of 1000B Cordura. I'll just go right for the, the big guns right from the start. This thread is probably not the best choice for this. I have no idea what it is, but it feels like cotton. But Oh yeah, no problem. So I'll show you the difference between high and low. This is high. This is low. High. Low. Not that big of a difference, but I guess you can kind of tell. Uh, I also realized as I was doing that short repair that there is no reverse on this machine. So if I wanted to lock off the stitches here, I could just back up a few stitches. And sew over it again. And for anything I'm doing with this machine, that method should be just fine. I don't expect I'll be making too many backpacks on this machine. But honestly... <laughs> That's not a bad looking stitch. Like, it's fine. I wonder if this can run V69. All right, so I think the bobbin winder. Oh, yeah. So it's here on the end of the hand wheel. And you just push in and give it a little spin and it pops out. That it? it just goes on like that, I guess. All right. Now I gotta figure out how to thread this thing. All right, let me consult with the manual to see how I wind a bobbin. Okay, this sounds super simple. The bobbin winding method. Winding bar in the machine is used for empty the bobbin winding. In general, winding lever on the fuselage hand wheel need to wind the bobbin of bottom line. Please follow the following steps. Press the wound by the finger according to counterclockwise rotation. The wound will be ejected automatically. That sounds grotesque. Put the empty bobbin on the winding stem, not tight, available in rod coil winding layer tissue. Okay. Top pole, insert the line ball and the line on the bobbin clockwise around four to five laps. So I guess it's supposed to go from uh, from this 
with the thread spool to this, and it looks like you just tension it with your finger. So, uh, let's see, clockwise, four to five laps. So, one, two, three, four, five. With your index finger between light cancel, the ball and the bobbin thread as shown in figure three, turn on the power switch can be winding. Winding don't exceed the bobbin edge. Turn the power switch to stop. When around. Man, this would be so hard to do with the switch, I think, without using the pedal. Turn the power switch to stop. When around the full, cut the line, remove the bobbin and the line ball. Press the fixed line pole, the winding rod, into the hand wheel and the clockwise rotation. On the operation of the winding, banding a sewing machine needle or charge on the pole. Right. That makes total sense. So basically, oops, I've already messed up here. Yeah, so we've gone around four or five times, and now I'm going to tension it with my finger, and let's see how that works. Okay, so I, I don't think clockwise works because I'm unwinding it, I think. Uh, yeah, it's not doing really anything. Hmm, let's try counterclockwise. I think I probably need to do this like I normally would and go through a hole on the bobbin. By the way, these appear to be class 15 bobbins. Not sure why it's struggling so much. Okay. Uh, oh, jeez. Okay. So somehow it sucked all the thread up into the... Oh, jeez. Yeah, that's not good. Alright, that's probably bad. So I think what... Uh, on the operation of the winding, banning a sewing machine needle or charge on the pole is supposed to mean is don't have thread going through the lifting arm. I'm not sure where that got tank. Oh, jeez. I'm making a complete mess of this. All right, let's see if we can finish this. Uh, come on. All right. Stand by. What? It's a plastic frame? Huh, that's funny. Uh, somewhere in the literature it said powdered alloy gears to provide a long life. I mean, even powdered alloy doesn't sound that encouraging, but there's nothing alloy at all about these gears. They're all plastic, no surprise. Huh. Oh, there's the problem. Okay, so a uh, thread got wound around here and is blocking it or stopping it from moving. So we just got to get that unwound somehow. It was not my intention to do a teardown of this machine, by the way. But here we are. It's very, very greasy. I don't want to be overly hard on an $8 sewing machine. 
Uh, that was actually quite difficult to get that thread untangled, and I seriously doubt that most people would be willing to go to the trouble. I think a lot of people would just throw that in the trash and say that it sucked. Um, so if you happen to, for some reason, get one of these, don't try to wind a bobbin with thread in the uh, lifting arm. But uh, So now I'm going to put this back together, but before I do, I can't possibly not see it run like this, right? All right, here we go. Hope I don't hurt myself here. All right, that's what it looks like. Let's get it put back together. So I wanna run the thread from the spool on this thread stand and I cannot figure out how to take this bobbin off. I'm just gonna pull this thread through the tensioner. Uh, and I wound a bobbin on my Singer Heavy Duty just to get it done. I don't know if, uh, if this thing could actually wind a bobbin that way or not, but uh, so I guess I'm just gonna go through this guide here and then between the tension discs through the next guide I don't know which way the bobbin was in so I might have it backwards but we'll see there also does not appear to be any sort of tension spring or anything on the bobbin <coughs> the bobbin case at all but Right, okay, we've got V69 in this bad boy. Let's see what we can do now. If we can get this cover back on. Right, okay, can we get this back on? Hooray! All right. So two layers of 1000D Cordura with V69 thread that is almost certainly going to get tangled up in this. Does this spin? No, it shouldn't, All right? Yeah, so that should be okay. All right, let's give it a try. Is the light on? No, the light's not on because it's not plugged in, Jason. All right, now that it's plugged in, yep, we've got the massively helpful light turned on. Okay, here we go. Come on, you can do it. Stopped feeding there for a second. I think we might. Yeah, we're okay. Thought it might have gotten a big ball of thread that stopped it from feeding, but seems to be okay. Okay. Now we're definitely running into some problems. Yeah, definitely a bobbin thing. It might be because I, I may have the bobbin in the wrong way. Come on, if we can just... Come on, help me up. Alright, we might have to pull the needle out. Oh, geez, that's tight. Oh yeah, <clears throat> I don't know if you can see that, but the thread is wrapped around the bobbin case a bunch of times the wrong, I don't, I don't know, the wrong direction, but it's not supposed to be like that. So Yeah, that's not good. All right, I'll try it the 
other way, maybe? I don't remember which way it was. With a normal bobbin case, it's there's a spring that the thread slides on. Oh, maybe it's that one. Is it supposed to hook under there? Man, I... So there's the hook. Yeah, it doesn't seem to have any kind of tensioner or anything. Well, let's try again. Mm, no, that's not not going well. Okay, I'm gonna take it out and put it the other way right away. There's a groove here that this slides into. That's why I'm having problems getting it in. It's not, I wasn't getting it fully into the groove. Once it's in the groove on both sides, it goes in just fine. Nope. So, I'm just going to try with the original bobbin, which is wound beautifully tight, and I would be willing to bet a significant amount of money was not wound on this machine. But, Put that in. Just want to see if it works any better with that thread. Or perhaps I am missing something. There should be some kind of tension spring on the bobbin. Maybe there's one there and I'm somehow missing it. It's definitely not like in this. It's very strange. Let me see if I get the same result. Oh, never mind. I see what the problem is. The tension fell out. If you noticed that long before I did, drop a comment and let me know. Okay, so let's try one more time. V69 top and bottom. So it doesn't seem to like V69, and uh, I'm not going to waste any more time on it because it's probably fairly self-evident that this machine is not going to run that serious of a thread. So let's go back to the stock configuration. I want to make sure that it's still working, and I want to test the battery function. Okay, so it still works with the thread that came with the machine. Who knows what that is? And honestly, like, that's really nice tension, nice stitches. I really have nothing to criticize there. Let's see if the battery function works. Oh, we've got a light on already, so that's encouraging. We'll just stick with the 1000 D and just to make sure it's clear. Here's the power cord not plugged in. All right, that's kind of hilarious. So this is the line of stitching that I just did. And the back side. Sorry, I know there's a lot of stitches on this thing, but I mean, honestly, again, I have no complaints about that stitch formation. It's fine, like really good, actually. So it's somewhat ironic that I'm sitting here playing with this machine in between my Singer Heavy Duty, which has turned out to be a far better machine than I planned it to be, uh, and my Bernina Record 930, maybe one of the greatest sewing machines ever made. And uh, it fits right in between these two as a high quality... No, it's not. Uh, so, like, this is a piece of junk. It's a toy. Uh, however, 
it sewed two layers of 1000 denier cordura together quite nicely. I have no idea if that thread would hold up to any use, and I'm discouraged by the apparent lack of ability to run at least V69, maybe some other thread, you know, Mara 70 or something like that could be used. Would I ever make something with this machine? No, I mean, maybe on a dare or something, but like, it's not a usable sewing machine in that respect, to me, anyway. Is there any use for a machine like this, though? I mean, I guess the fact that it's battery powered, or could can be battery powered, maybe there's something there, maybe as even as like an emergency repair kit for your bug out cabin or your boat or something. I mean, it's not going to sew anything substantial. Like the fact that it did those couple of layers of 1000D is neat, uh, but you know, you're not going to sew a sail or, uh, you know, repair a, a really substantial bag or something. But you could probably sew a patch onto something with it. It might be better than hand stitching or faster than hand stitching, depending on how much you hate hand stitching. Uh, I don't know. I said earlier, like, maybe if you have a kid or somebody who wants to get into sewing, I think this would be more frustrating than helpful. Uh, I think somebody... I guess if you don't want them to get into sewing, buy them this machine, they'll be so frustrated they give up on sewing. Um, you know, I've, I've got a fair amount of experience messing with sewing machines, and this was difficult because it's so small and lightweight. You know, it's one of the features they tout about it is it's small and lightweight. Well, that makes it very difficult to sew on, and I wasn't even actually trying to sew a project. I was just running seams on scraps. The thread getting tangled up when I accidentally tried to wind a bobbin with it and I've, I've done that with all my other machines many times. The thread flops around, gets in the way, but I've never had it wrap up like that and stop the machine. So, as I said earlier, I think a lot of people would have just thrown the machine away at that point and been done with it. That said, I really did repair a shirt that needed a repair with this machine, and I have no doubt that repair on this machine will last at least as long as the factory stitching. When I got the this shirt's not that old. You know, it started unraveling pretty quickly after I got it. So, uh, you know, it did serve a useful purpose. I don't know who this machine would be good for. Maybe as a gag gift. Uh, it's kind of a wasteful gag gift, but it does so. I can give it that. The instructions are hilarious uh, and in some ways not even not helpful, but unhelpful. But, uh, yeah, for eight bucks, I mean, you know, how much complaining can I do? So there you have it. For around eight U.S. dollars, you can get a sewing machine that kind of works pretty much. So there you go. I hope you found this video entertaining or informative or useful or something. If you did, clicking the like button is always a nice thing to do. If you like this sort of thing, definitely subscribe for more, generally more serious sewing than this. If you check out the description below the video, there's some links you can uh, click on and buy stuff and that'll make me rich. If you have questions or comments, or if you have one of these machines and have a use for it, I'd love to hear what that is, drop it in the comments section below. Thanks so much for watching, I'll see you next time.